This is my friend Don. Hey. And my son Bryant. We're here to look at a micro hydroelectric system. This is uh, this is the heart of the system right here. And uh, actually it's part of a fairly I'll just turn it off so we can hear a little bit better. It's, it's part of a uh, hybrid system that it has several inputs. There's the hydro. I have solar panels on the house. And then I have also as a backup to those two, I have a gas generator that's, that's wired in. But my system comes down here. This is the uh, I think it's the 1500 unit and it's a four inch Pelton bronze Pelton wheel uh, which is not at all unusual for this sort of technology and I'll turn it on just so you can see how it how it will start working there you go it starts spraying and yeah the, the ideal setup is that that the water basically just falls straight off the Pelton wheel, so all the energy is transferred to the wheel. So it looks like it looks like you could have multiple nozzles, I but could. you decided to go with one. Why for, is that? For the moment, I'm dealing with just one nozzle, mostly because um, the system comes with uh, graded graduated sizes, and I would find that the smaller sizes would just fill up with with debris from the water line because uh, I just have as we'll see in a minute an open intake at the top it's fill it's got a screen filter but still um, uh, it, it I get stuff in the line and I have to sort of flush the line every so often especially after a real heavy rainstorm when the when the stream is really agitated so what size nozzle I have, have a, I have a half inch nozzle on now uh, I think when I mothball it for the winter, because this is a three season system in my setup, because once the water comes down the hill, uh, it can, in a, in a contained pipeline, water can run till 17 below zero. Uh, but as soon as you get cavitation or turbulence in there, you have suddenly super cooled water that can freeze in a, in a minute. So I, I mothball the system as soon as we get to a stretch of days where the, the daily high does not get above freezing. Okay, I, just, so. I just shut it down. Usually that means from mid to late November through early March, the okay. system is just shut down. What elevation are we at here? We are at about 3,100 feet. Okay. Um, and this is Highland County, Virginia. That's right. This is Highland County. So at the moment, I have a single half-inch nozzle on. I will be. I have the new. I made a new fitting so that when I mothball it this year, I will uh, switch to instead of having a single half-inch, I will have twin five-eighths-inch nozzles. The twin being you you want to have forces coming at that at that axle from two sides, uh, so that I can I can adjust the flow uh, on each of them based on how much flow there is coming down the creek at the top because that's that's the deciding factor. You want to make sure that you have this this pipe full of water all the way to the top, which for me is 110 feet higher than where we are. Okay. So the amount of water that flows through here can range anywhere from 75 gallons a minute down to 15. Mm -hmm. uh, we're coming in the dry we're coming up on the driest month of the year here. So from August to early September is usually fairly dry and I just know that I have to I have to keep the the valve closed enough again to keep this stack of water fully charged all the way to the top but uh, okay. so I was trying to remember we put this in I think in 2006 I believe so, that's that's about right so that's yeah. about 13 years of use yeah um, do you, have you seen any wear on the I, system uh, the only wear I've seen is that I did have to have the bearings replaced uh, last year okay after after 12 years of use mm -hmm. uh, so I just uh, shipped it off to the manufacturer and he shipped it back, you know, 10 days later. 
Okay, uh, how about the Pelton wheel? You see any wear on that? I have not seen any wear on the Pelton wheel whatsoever. The silicon bronze is extremely abrasion resistant. So mm -hmm. unless your water is really um, muddy all the time, which mine isn't, um, mine is really only muddy after a big rainstorm. Yeah, Other than now, that, it's clear water coming down. Now they even have stainless steel Peltons. That are yeah, more resistant. No doubt. Um, more, but but well, I've not I, I've not had any problem whatsoever. The only issue, as I said, is getting debris in the water line. And actually, I was um, sort of concerned this morning because the system was running slow, and I was trying to figure out what's going on. And I I actually found a a crawdad right here where it goes from this two-inch pipe down to a three-quarter inch nipple, which has to you know, I have to downsize it. And there was a crawdad that had got in sucked the into the pipe wow. and then got down here and actually just the pressure of that water had it, um, it was like driving a piece of rock out. I mean, I, which is something you have to be aware of. That, yeah. And I do that on occasion. <laughs> um, pretty much after every big rainstorm, I just disconnect. This fitting here is really just hand tight. I can just, I can just unscrew this fitting. And so that comes out, and I just flush the mud in the line after every, you know, vigorous rainstorm, which, you know, is no big deal. I just, it's just something you have to be attentive uh, to. So, and I have differing valves and cut, uh, you know, there's a ball valve and a gate valve. No reason for choosing one or the other. It's just what I had um, so that I can really control where the water is going pretty much all the time. So that second valve off to the side here, you have a T. That's just a bypass valve, so okay. that when I, when I am doing some work and cleaning out down here, uh, if I want to continue to flush the whole line, I just open that up, okay. and it just runs off into the creek. So what voltage you running at here? I'm running at 48 volts, uh, which uh, is the most efficient um, way to step up. In retrospect, I probably would have just stuck with 12 volts, but only because there's all other kinds of things that are 12 volt and very few things are 48 volt. Yeah. So that, that affected the, the choice that I have in the battery bank, but also um, I have a site just downstream from here about 75 yards where I'm going to build another uh, hydro turbine, but it's a very different mechanical technology the pelton wheel is for high head low flow which is which is what i have 110 feet ahead you know 15 20 gallons a minute flow whereas all, the one i'll put downstream is going to be a, a mitchell or a cross feed turbine which is high flow low head so mm -hmm. i'll get about six feet ahead down there but you know several hundred gallons a minute and if if the system was all 12 volt, I could easily put a 12 volt alternator on there to, to generate the power. So, yeah. so uh, let's take a look at the uh, switch gear you got here. 